Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing and Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at this from Arctic. This is the Arctic M2 Pro. Now, this is an M.2 SSD cooler for 2280 size drives and could potentially keep your drives very nice and cool without costing an absolute fortune. At the moment, in the UK, this is available on Amazon.co.uk, links will be in the video description, for just under £5. The original retail price is supposedly going to be 9.99 that is in euros so potentially depending where you are in the world the price may change but is this actually worth buying and is it actually lethal now there's two versions available we've got the silver one which we've got here there's also a black version as well so you can get one which will suit in with your motherboard aesthetics now it's very small and very compact and measures in at 73 mil by 24.2 by 10.5 millimeters high. So very slim light indeed, which means it is perfect for those of you with a PS5 or PS5 Slim. This is designed to fit in there perfectly. And also if you've got a Freezer 3 AIO where the overhang is a little bit much for some M.2 drives, this is designed to fit perfectly underneath that mountain bracket. Now you'd think with this being so cheap and uh, very compact, you'd think it'd be extremely easy to install, and to be honest with you, it pretty much is, although there are some gotchas. So we're going to go through today and show you some examples of how to install this. I've also done some benchmarks as well, so I've compared it with a bear drive, also with a stock heatsink, which is on our MSI motherboard, which is in the background, which is actually rated for PCI Express Gen 5 drives, so it is a nice big bulky heatsink, and obviously I've compared it with this to see which one comes out best and is it actually worth getting? Does it perform well? So let's take a little look and see what we actually get inside the box. So as you say, this is the silver version of the heatsink here, available in black also, if that suits you. And to take it apart, you can just slide this top section off. It's a little bit on the tight side. So this is the first complaint. The uh, thing doesn't really want to come apart at all. It's actually very well machined, but probably a little bit too well machined. Uh, the top just doesn't want to slide off. Now I have actually tried taking this apart a little bit earlier and actually I have incurred some bodily damage. So the edges on here are extremely sharp, not quite razor sharp, but not far off it. So uh, you could get yourself a nasty cut. So potentially, they do actually suggest when you're taking it apart to wear protective gloves, and I would probably go along with that. So it's been a long time since I've actually bought a PC component where they've suggested wearing protective gloves, but it is what it is, I guess. Okay, so I've been here for a few minutes now trying to get this thing apart, and uh, basically it doesn't want to come apart. It is completely wedged in there. It's going to need hammering. I've tried wedging it from the side, and it's making an absolute mess of the side of this particular enclosure. Now it's not too bad on the silver one, but on the black one is going to take off the coating on there. So yeah, this one is definitely a failure from the get-go. So luckily I actually bought two of these thinking I could buy one and do one as a giveaway, but I actually don't think I'm going to do that because I think these are actually basically dangerous. So let's put this one to one side for now and we'll take a look at the one that I've used already in my testing today. So what we get are the two sections. So we get the top section with the logos and the slats in it quite heavy and then you get the base section which is a little bit more on the lightweight side combined weight around about 40 grams for this so it's uh, still pretty lightweight and hopefully if I can get this one to go together we'll see that it does yeah that is what it's meant to do it's meant to slide through like that like pretty easily but the other one I'm not sure what it's got on it maybe some of the thermal compound has actually got into the runners on the side but basically this thing just doesn't want to come out it's it's jammed in there solid. So yeah, that's a definite fail. So also included in the pack, there are two TP3 strips. These are the thermal compound. There's a 1.5 mil one, which normally resides in the top section. So the slightly thicker one. When you're installing a double-sided drive, you only use the one thermal pad. So that is the one which is included on the top piece. The other pad included is a one mil one. This is again TP3, and this goes into the bottom layer. So this is gonna be if you're using a single-sided drive. If you're not too sure if your drive is single-sided or double-sided, if you take your drive, for example here, we've got the Fickle FN501. This is a single-sided drive. So you can see there are chips and a controller on this top side, and on the bottom there, it is completely flat. So if there's any chips, memory chips, or controllers on the bottom of your drive, 
it is effectively a double-sided drive, so do bear that in mind. So single-sided drives use both thermal pads, double-sided drives only use the primary one, which is included on the top part. So let's give you a close-up of this, and I'll show you how to install the drive actually into the cooler. Okay, so we've got our cooler here. You can see the Arctic logo on. So this normally, when you get it out of the packaging, which uh, we can't because it's stuck in here, you'll see there is this blue film. So you can just remove the blue film to reveal the thermal pad. So there's the 1.5 on the top. And on the bottom section, you've got this one here. So what you do is remove the clear plastic off the bottom, then put it in to the base section. And then when you're done, you can then peel off the top coat. That's easier. If you do it the other way around, if you take off the blue first and then stick it down, the plastic bit on here is actually quite hard to get off. So do the plastic bit on the bottom, the thicker plastic, then remove that after. So with that, you've got your two sections, as you can see here. So this is the bottom. And what you want to do is to get your drive and line it up so that the M.2 pins are exposed on one end and this clip section is exposed on the other. So all we're going to do is basically just gently drop this down into the unit and as you can see there so we've got a little bit of overhang on each one of the sides so at this point you can decide whether or not your drive is going to be mounted sort of m.2 side one way or the other so you can get the orientation right of the uh, of the top plate there so for us on most boards ours is going to be facing this way with the m.2 towards my right so we're going to put the top on like this. So this is where it gets a little bit uh, concerning because the top section you just line up and get it so it's pretty much flat there and just use a little bit of pressure. And you should see that it kind of clamps together. So you can see there hopefully that it's nice and flat all the way around. So that's basically just squish the drive like a sandwich in between the two sections there. So that is uh, pretty much it for that. The rest is just installing onto a motherboard. So let's go and quickly grab a motherboard and we'll show you how to install that. Okay, so we've got a motherboard here. So let's uh, show you how to install it. Now, something to be wary of as well, because of the thickness of the bottom section here, like with this MSI board, if you've got any of these supportive pads, uh, you're gonna need to remove those. So those are normally just double-sided tape holding it in place. So you'll need to remove those. With this drive, we've got one of those lock-in pins so we can move that out of the way, just put it to one side. And as you would with a normal M.2 drive, get on a bit of a slight angle and wiggle it into place. Lower the drive down. And a little bit fiddly. We'll try that again. I think that's in place now. All right. Still don't want to go down. Right, that's sort of in place. For some bizarre reason, it won't lock down. And I'm not entirely sure why. I think it's the base is actually too long or I've left just a fraction too little on this end here. So it can't quite get through. So the drive needs to go a little bit further this way in the unit. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to try and take this thing apart, which I've already tried a few times and it just doesn't want to come apart. So really it should have been designed to be a little bit smaller on each end so that you can actually physically install the damn thing. So I think if there was just a screw on this end here, it would be okay. But yeah, this is uh, not good. Yeah, the metal is catching on this bit here. So let's take the drive apart and uh, we'll give it another go. Okay, so I've finally managed to actually get it pried apart very slightly. So yeah, what you're doing is putting that in there and kind of levering this out, which still is actually very hard to do. And uh, the stuff sticks like absolute freaking glue. So we have to take it off. Actually, no, I can leave the top one in place, I think. So what we want to do is to Loosen the drive up a bit, and yeah, this is just tearing the pad apart. This is not a great experience, I've got to be honest with you. Okay, so let's try that again. 
So we want a little bit more overhang at the far end. I think that might just do it. So as you can see, there's very little clearance, that end and that end. So I think the whole thing needs to be a couple of millimeters shorter. So we've got to get our top plate again and kind of line it up in there and a little bit of firm pressure. Well, I'm slightly loath to put too much pressure on it because I've got to get the damn thing back out again. All right, let's try the motherboard again. Right, take whatever number this is now. So we've got a very small overhang on this section at the front there. So let's see if this will actually fit in the M.2. Just about. Right. And now we're catching on the front section there. So this is basically not going to fit at all in this particular motherboard. Anyway, just so you know how it fits, just in case you're mad enough to even contemplate buying one of these things, uh, goes in as you would normally with M.2 drive. Although, yeah, it doesn't fit in, so, and it locks down at the bottom, so. I'm basically gonna give up. This worked okay on my other motherboard, on the top slot, so maybe I'll try the top slot and see if that is made any differently. I don't think it's gonna be, but you never know. So we have to remove our drive support pad because that is going to get in the way. So you can see on the double sided tape so we can move that away. So let's move the board down a bit so you can see what's going on here. So again, similar sort of principle. Let's see if we can get it to go in this time. Nope, doesn't want to fit in there. And that's got no chance whatsoever. So getting this drive actually inside lined up correctly to fit into a motherboard, depending on any overhang you might have on your M.2 slot, because the bottom bit is basically going to affect it. So I'm going to try and take this apart again, and we'll give it one last go. And after that, I'm giving up. Okay, I've managed to get it apart very slightly. And for those of you that are wondering, what is the best size screwdriver? So I'm using a 2 mil flathead. And that seems to do it pretty much every time. Shame you didn't include one. Okay, so I think I've got it lined up okay now. So you can kind of hear it when it goes into the M.2 slot. So so there we go. And then it does take a little bit of pressure on the end there just to get it to lock in. So you could do it like that just so you know the drive's in and then potentially after, you could put the uh, the top on after. A little bit of pressure on there to put on, but I wouldn't put too much pressure on your M.2 slot. So if you know it fits, undo the latch, take the drive out again, then apply your pressure, snap it into place, and hopefully, yeah, that's gone in. There we go, that is finally in place. Hallelujah, it's actually installed. And to be fair, it actually looks quite nice when it's in. Maybe the black version might have been better in here, but for uh, illustration purposes here, you can see it's possible to install it. Although I have still got uh, yeah, a few cuts and dings. And again, taking it apart with the, uh, the two mil flat edge is pretty much the way to go, I think. So in here. Yeah, and just get it in there and uh, you can gently wedge it apart. But do be super careful because this is very, very sharp metal. And even when it's kind of open, it's not fully open and you could quite easily catch yourself on any of these things. So anyway, there is the, uh, the abomination that is the M.2 Pro. So I suppose the question is, does it actually perform? Um, let's take a look at the results. Right, so now we're back on track. So let's take a look at the results and see if this is actually worth buying at all. Clearly, in terms of uh, convenience and ease of use, 
there's a few things you could say against it. But in terms of performance, let's see what it does. So first of all, on the left hand side of your screen now, you're seeing the PCI Express Gen 4x4 drive. So this is the Silicon Power UD90, I believe it is, or UD70, one terabyte drive. So you can see the speeds there. The speeds are pretty much consistent across the board. Although we do see on that first test there, which I'll highlight, when it comes to the third part of the first test, you can definitely see there's some throttling going on and the drive is starting to uh, wind down a little bit. So we've got a significant reduction in speed on the third part of the test there. Overall, most of the figures are very similar. When it comes to the temperatures, the drive itself idled at 57 degrees Celsius. And that is in a 27 degrees Celsius room. And the low temperature got to 81 degrees. And that is, uh, yeah, that's not great for your drive and for longevity. So next up is going to be the MSI one. So this is the same drive, Gen 5 cooler, which is included on the B650 Edge Wi-Fi. Idle temperature, 38 degrees Celsius, so about 10 degrees above ambient. And the load temperature never got higher than 53 degrees Celsius. So actually a significant jump, almost 30 degrees difference. So does the Arctic M.2 Pro do any better? So idle temperatures, about one degree hotter than the MSI cooler, which is actually pretty good because the MSI cooler is pretty huge. And the low temperatures are basically a little bit higher. So load is 58 degrees Celsius against our best of 53. So five degrees hotter, but for a significantly smaller sized cooler and the idle temperatures are basically the same. When it comes to the performance figures between the MSI Gen 5 cooler and the Arctic M2 Pro, it's pretty much identical. There's a few wins and loses across the board there, but overall the performance is pretty much bang on. So now I have to try and wrap this video up. And for those of you that are watching, I'm sorry if it's been a long one. This should be a very, very straightforward and simple process, but somehow they've managed to make a absolute pig's ear of the design of this. Now I've had other M.2 coolers, which actually use a very similar principle where they kind of snap together or they slot together. And in general, they're not too bad. Yes, they are a little bit fiddly at times. I think they would have been better off without going with the beveled edges and just go with some couple of M.2 screws in the side. I think that would have made a huge amount of sense, uh, would simplify the whole thing dramatically. And also, I think going with the, uh, the kind of the sharper edges on here for the design is not a great idea, especially if you do have to use any kind of force to either install or remove it. And again, I've managed to put a nice V into my thumb there, which actually was giving out a considerable amount of blood. Um, yes, I'm not necessarily a wimp, but I don't like cutting myself on PC stuff. And the fact that the sides now, I'll try and get you some close-ups of this, the sides of this are essentially ruined. Now again, this is the silver version, so it's, it's fine, it doesn't show up. And when it's mounted, you're really not gonna see it. But I think for a company such as Arctic, who, strive to do the best they possibly can and when it comes to their air coolers and their AIOs obviously they're pretty much the top of the range and in terms of both performance and pricing but I think with this the M.2 Pro I think they really need to go back to the drawing board and if I was to kind of give it a recommendation I would say you're probably best avoiding this at the moment hopefully they'll revise it and maybe make it a little bit easier to put together or something but in terms of if you're a novice builder, I would avoid it entirely. If you suffer with any form of dexterity, avoid it entirely. If you don't mind giving it a go and you've got five quid or 10 quid as it possibly might be, and you wanna try it, performance wise, there isn't anything to grumble about. The performance is actually very good. And it's very similar to that of a M.2 cooler, which is basically double the weight and double the size. So they've actually done a really good job. The thermal pads, I think, are a very good choice. The TP3 pads are very good indeed. Uh, nice and sticky when they need to be, and they do compress well. And obviously, as we've seen from the temperature tests, do a great job. But I just feel it needs a little bit more polish in and maybe some of those rough edges taken off, quite literally. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.